Hey everyone, this is Braid with Pickleball Effect. I'm really excited to be joined with Chuck from Gamma. Today we're going to dive into the question of what really is the difference between a $50 paddle and a $200 paddle. Gamma is one of my favorite paddle brands. I've reviewed several of their paddles now and they offer uh, a wide range of paddles. They have value paddles, uh, mid-range, and then performance level. And so I, I picked them to, to join me in this interview and figure out uh, what the answer to this question is. So Chuck, uh, tell us who you are and, and what you do for Gamma. Um, I, I'm the director of product marketing and I do a lot of the hands-on work with the pickleball paddle design and especially the graphic side of things. Uh, we have a nice team here enables us to, you know, put together our minds and come up with the best paddle we think the market is looking for at the given time. Uh, we believe in having a paddle for everyone. That's why we have a, a, a value line, we have a mid-range line, and we have a high point. And uh, I've been with Gamma for 34 years, so I've seen a lot of different things in these racket sports, paddle sports uh, yeah, markets. Couldn't think of a better person to have this conversation with. Uh, so again, thanks for, for being here. So the question being, you know, what is the difference between a $50 paddle and a $150 one? From a consumer's perspective, when I'm researching paddles, I'm looking at paddles, uh, you know, you look at the specs, uh, it seems like they're all made of the same thing. You have a polymer core, you have either a graphite or a fiberglass face, and that's kind of all it gives you. It's difficult to discern what the difference is. Uh, so as an example, I have your website pulled up here. I'm looking at three different paddles. I have the Gamma Quest, I have the Dart, and then I have the brand new uh, Riley Newman signature, the 206. So each of these paddles, when you look at the specs, have a very similar description, polymer core and a textured uh, fiberglass face. And then they have uh, you know, different handle lengths and shapes. Um, but from, from my point of view, it's like, okay, what really is the difference uh, without being able to, to hit them, you know? But between, mm -hmm. obviously in your head, you're like, okay, obviously quality plays a role, but you know, what's the quality difference when the descriptions seem so similar? Well, really, it, it goes with a lot of the materials that you can't see within the paddle. Now, everybody, I shouldn't say everybody, but mostly everyone is using a polypropylene core these days. But there's different types of polypropylene, and there's different shapes, and there's different characteristics to each uh, core that makes a paddle unique in itself. Like the paddle you mentioned, the Odyssey, for example, that comes out of our value line. And, for example, uh, that has a polypropylene core, but it's a, it's only a 12 millimeter wide paddle, which means you have a dense core. It means the when I say that, the honeycombs are small in diameter, they're tightly packed in, and that's going to give you a real stiff, hard surface. So you'll notice that most of the low-cost paddles, uh, they play stiff, they make a lot, a lot more noise than the newer paddles that mm -hmm. come out with a thicker core and the wider cell. Uh, the graphite face, it just means a lower grade graphite, meaning it's not as soft. There's, there's, it's not 100% pure. It's not. It's got some additive in it to give it its its strength. And they're generally paddles where uh, they can take a lot of a beating too, because they're so heavy. They're heavier, of course. Uh, you give an example like the Discovery paddle I have right here. Uh, this is the same shape as the needle, and this is the same shape as the compass. Mm -hmm. But the real difference is, for, like, for example, this is a cross, this is a, a blank that we use for the compass. And you can see how thick this paddle is compared to a blank here. Uh, see can, can you raise the map just a little bit? Okay, yeah. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So you can see the difference in the cell size. This is much wider. The cell size is open. You have 25% more open air per cell. So therefore, you're going to have a softer feel, quieter feel. When you start getting dense and packing these cells in tight, this paddle is going to become stiffer, and it's going to be more obviously more rigid, and it's going to be harder. So you're going to you're going to feel a hard, heavy ball off this paddle, where you'll feel a softer, probably a more forgiving shot off of this paddle here. And then okay, there's different grades of graphite. Like this is our highest grade graphite because this is on the compass. This is a hundred and a sixty dollar paddle. The, this one here is about $69 or $79.99, and you can see how thin it is. Uh, you can see when you hit it how much harder it is, and it's heavier. I mean, this is the same shape. It's less, it's not as wide, but yet when this paddle is built complete, you can see the difference in the width. That makes a mm -hmm. big difference too. 
and that's because the cell size. This paddle here is heavier, despite the fact that it's thinner and um, the cell size is smaller, but it's it's like a quarter of an ounce heavier. Oh, so interesting. You, you okay. pay for a little lighter materials. You pay for a higher grade material. It's a lot of things you cannot see uh, when a paddle is finished and hanging on the shelf. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So you're going to get that softer play from the thicker core, the thick, wider uh, cell. So is it is it more expensive to make? I guess, I mean, it's more material it, it is. in general. And then getting those specs you want, does it just cost more? It's add cost to it once you start formulating different things rather than right off the shelf at a factory. You know, a lot of times we'll send our specs over and we expect a certain type of graphite face that's this responsive. And we'll have to pay a little bit extra to make that the way we want it versus taking it right off what they're offering to everybody else. Yeah, which I'm glad yeah, you do. Uh, yeah, with the low, low end paddles, it's pretty much stock. I mean, it's fairly, there's not much that you're giving them spec wise, asking them to make some changes. It's pretty much, okay, what, what, what with this paddle, I need a, this price point, I wanna make it this shape. I want to use a polypropylene core. I want to have a graphite face. Let's let's see if you can hit our target price. Do something differently by put a longer handle on it, shorter mm -hmm. handle, a better grip, stuff of that nature. But when you start using the graphite face, and that's where you run into more money. They're generally more expensive. So graphite's like, going to be more expensive than fiberglass? Right. The, the low-end tennis rackets, for example, were always a high percentage of fiberglass with a little bit of graphite blended into it uh and they were your pat they're generally the, the rackets that come in around you know, cost 120 dollars and most of those are pretty strong mm -hmm. uh your high-end tennis rackets are high modulus graphite and that's wrapped differently it's lighter it's much stronger um so you're paying probably 10 to 15 dollars more for that racket and gotcha. it just generally is a, a better a better paddle. It's uh, just like a paddle. It's lighter, more responsive. Mm -hmm. uh, so last question I have for you, Chuck, is if, if I'm researching a paddle, uh, should I consider when I'm looking at the prices uh, versus quality ratio? Well, uh, I always, when I'm selling a paddle to a customer, I like to tell them, I said, uh, you know, how serious are you going to be about playing pickleball? You think you're going to, you know, you have a lot of other friends playing it. Are you going to really get involved in it? Because if you are, I'm not gonna to try to sell you the least expensive paddle I have, nor am I gonna sell you the most expensive. I'm gonna put you in the middle range because you're gonna accelerate quickly in this game. Your level of play will go up much faster in this game than it would say for tennis. You're gonna get better faster. You're gonna wish you had play, bought the better paddle rather than going with a heavier paddle because it's the least expensive. So therefore, it's better to spend a little 20 or $30 more now than it is to spend another 70 later when you find out, oh, I need a lighter paddle. I'm getting better at the net. I can dink now. I can do certain things. I just can't do with this heavier paddle. I should have bought a little higher end paddle. And lastly, I would say, this is getting like the golf industry. It's getting like the tennis industry. When high end tennis rackets come out and now even drivers, you either go get fitted or you have an opportunity to try a club. I would certainly, if I was, paying a lot of money for a pickleball paddle now, I would take it out and I would demo it for at least a week, week and a half, two weeks. Be absolutely sure that's the paddle you like. A lot of places, including damasports.com and I know Pickleball Central, one of our key retailers and some of our other key retailers, like Total Pickleball and Just Paddles, they have programs where you can send it back if you're not happy with it. It's a try-in period. But you're paying a lot of money, so you might as well make sure that you like the paddle. And that's the nice thing about these programs, or you're spending 150 bucks for a paddle. Uh, I, I think demo it's well worth the, the effort. Yeah, I love that. Uh, that was a great tip. And, and when I do my reviews, I do the same thing. I, I actually I play with it for a two week period. I drill with it, I play with it, because it, it takes some time to get a feel for a paddle and know how it plays and if it fits your game or not. And so that that's one of the things that kind of differentiates you know, my reviews for a lot of the other ones out there is the time I put into playing with these paddles to understand how they perform. And I think a person buying a paddle should do the same thing. So that's a great tip. Uh, Chuck, I think we got it, man. Uh, I think we answered the question well. Uh, I love the advice you gave there at the end. And I, I really appreciate your time and uh, look forward to possibly chatting again. Uh, you're quite welcome anytime, Brayden. Thank you.